Hey guys, I'm Anakin. I'm a Tekken pro and a Red Bull player. I'm a part of the fighting game community, a scene that grew out of one-on-one -on -one battles and rivalries in video game arcades. We're gonna take a look at some of America's most iconic arcades for the FGC. Down in Brooklyn, Next Level took up the mantle as the premier competitive battleground for the fighting game community after the legendary Chinatown Fair closed in 2011. Like New York itself, Next Level was a melting pot for the games and groups that make up the FGC. Past champions from Chinatown Fair and New Blood battled it out in weekly tournaments on livestream for the whole world to see. Punk, IDOM, and Smug all developed their championship skills in the stripped down hole in the wall called Next Level. In New York City, we had a lot of arcades, but they eventually all closed down like in the mid 90s to the late 90s because the rent is just too high. And when Chinatown Fair is going through hard times, I try to take reins of it and try to do the finance. It's very difficult. When I tried to buy Chinatown Fair at the end of its heyday, they, it was just asking for too much money. And I had to also pay off the back debt and upgrade the existing facility it would cost a lot of money. And I said, wow, I have to put it into something else. Henry and Nick Chen, when they opened up Next Level, they wanted to keep the dingy Chinatown Fair, like this right. kind of hard, rugged a little bit. And like, yeah, the vibe, just the vibe. It wasn't this pristine, no beautiful, problem. yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't, yeah. Arena. Exactly, oh, it wasn't, what? it was just, you know, some chairs, a um, couple of cabinets. It's I, remember, a home. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when my brother had took me in to Next Level like the first time. Uh, when we first saw the Next Level, then you were like, you were expecting something <laughs> I ain't going <laughs> <laughs> It was like, uh, just like. Hold some, the wall. Yeah, yeah. just hold the wall. It was a hallway, it was a hallway. It was a hallway. And I mean that, I mean it with all due respect. With all the love. With all love and respect. I wouldn't have it the way. But I also like that people like wanted to make it good too. Oh, yeah. Like it wasn't it, was, it, it wasn't just Henry being like, you know, it was everyone that cared about the scene and wanted to give people a place to play. Was, everyone contributed to doing something for Next Level. The, it, it was all the communities and all yeah. the games. And, and like th that was the coolest part like about Next Level. Cause like, you know, obviously with that CF vibe, you know, you're in an arcade. So on all the scenes, you can see, you get people from all the scenes, yeah. you know? And like Next Level kind of continues that tradition. Again, it's gonna be Dragon Ball Fighter Z and Street Fighter V tonight. Also Marvel 3 Action, they've been playing Marvel 3 here every week. They get a, a good amount of entrance, anywhere between eight and 10, depending on the week. We were, did one of our Tekken monthlies, and it was Capcom Cup Finals. You know how we had the projector up? Oh, yeah. yeah. We had your games <laughs> oh, yeah. on the projector, and every time you'd come on, every match would stop. Oh, yeah. And yeah. everybody yeah. would be watching you. We're all watching on Mike's laptop. In the yeah. Club. yeah. <laughs> Let's make some noise for these two players, Idom and Puck. Capcom Cup 2019 Grand oh, Finals, USA v USA. Let's go. Dude, the whole place popped off when you won. Your Capcom Cup champion, I do It wasn't just like, oh, it's a Tekken tournament. We care every we care about all the communities yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And that was one of my favorite moments. It is really a community effort, yeah. for lack of a better term, because everybody participates and gives in and tries to make it that kind of a special place that it is. The big thing is those other gamers usually play multiple games. Our tournament entries dipped a bit when Strive came out, because they were playing Strive. You know, when, when new seasons of Street Fighter dropped, they were playing Street Fighter. There's a lot of overlap. I mean, if nobody was there to play Tekken and you wanted to play, well, you sit down and play Street Fighter, you sit down and play Soul Calibur, whatever. Overall, I think it makes for better players because each game has a different skill set that's required and you develop different skills. And I think that crossover only helps people. The next level and stuff, it's like, there's just a whole bunch of people there who enjoy fighting games. Like, no one's really gonna talk down your fighting game. Or, like, everyone's pretty appreciative. It's a beauty that you can see everyone in one tight space. I got introduced to Spooky through one of my mutual friends. We started becoming pretty close friends. Like I started going to his house, like to start recording basement casuals and stuff. Spooky started with just a DVD recorder. And like he would upload footage to like YouTube channel and stuff, right? And then Vic was like, yo, I'm gonna do something crazy. And I'm like, what, bro? And he's like, 
I'm gonna cash out of my 401k and go all in on this streaming stuff. I don't know if it's gonna work out or not. You with it? And I'm like, yeah, bro, like, I believe in the vision. First off, streaming's a blow up. <laughs> I would know since we were the first ones. It's like back then, like, we first started streaming. Super Street Fighter 4. We were streaming to like 10,000 viewers back then. And like, there was no revenue ecosystem. Yeah, it wasn't even a sub button, bro. Yeah, there was nothing. 10,000 viewers, can you imagine that? And we can't make a freaking dime. I remember and that. Then like, and then they're all telling me and Vic get a job. Yeah. They get a real job. <laughs> <laughs> and we're getting evicted. Um, it doesn't immediately affect our schedule of upcoming events. <laughs> and then like, Justin TV hit up Vic and they're like, hey, like you wanna be a partner on the platform. Right? And like that's when things uh, slowly started to change. Justin TV ended up becoming Twitch, so Vic became one of the first channels on the site, and like you know he was one of the first legacy channels. So I think his account is like within the top 200 of like lifetime all-time views on the, on Twitch TV. And then from there, like obviously as we scaled up from just doing house sessions to tournaments, we were having like 10,000 people like w watching the weekly tournaments from Next Level Arcade and stuff like that. It's really groundbreaking stuff. You think about it, because like today, it's like major tournaments get 10,000 views. We got a nice little station back here where the guys play. It's got a couple of nice cameras set up here. One more camera here for the commentary guys. And this is the area where I hang out and I do everything. So we do have bigger setups that we use for the larger events, but uh, this this is plenty for Battle Circuit. I think I figured out where Next Level was because uh, I was watching Spooky Street back then. Yeah, back when uh, everyone was playing uh, Street Fighter 4. Next Level's world famous. Like, yeah, I think I Japan out. knows where Next Level is, you know what I mean? Like, the best players in the world know that. Dudes in Pakistan knows. knew about Next yeah, Level, so I'm like, oh, you're having a tournament? Yeah, it's a Next Level. He goes, it's a Next Level? I'm like, yes? Yeah, the he hole was in the wall in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, loved yeah, it. Yeah. He wanted to be there. Yeah, I it, mean, the beautiful thing about it is nobody's doing it for the money. Everybody did it because they loved it, and yeah. like, we'll just figure it out later. I think that's the, t the best type of environment because it's not forced, yep. it's natural, and you know, Organic, it's for yeah. the love. It's for the love. He turned in his resignation letter. He was like, <laughs> Yo, he, I got, got this, bro. Two weeks notice. To <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I wanted to have some sick story on deck, including everyone, but to be honest, there's just way too many of you. What I did want to say though is this project helped remind me of why we do what we do. And throughout everything we've been through, especially in the past year, everybody on this project and in that room is family. We don't always play the same games, but that never affected the love we have for each other, being part of the New York City FGC. We grew up in Chinatown Fair and we matured to the next level. Ooh. We had rivalries, we cheered each other wrong in tournaments, we shared drink, food, strategies, but for damn sure we hated to lose to each other. <laughs> Transcending that, we all put quarters on the machine, we all went out to eat, we all ignored Sam for like 45 minutes saying last game. <laughs> oh my God. No. Oh, last game. Oh, closing time. Yeah, oh. Rest in peace, Sam. We supported Henry when he, you know, put the community on his back and moved us all to Brooklyn. The past year though, really tested our resolve. We lost friends and family members, but across the internet and, you know, even the country, I still felt connected to each and every one of you guys in some way. Y'all are my forever, my brothers, and um, that's exactly what makes the FGC special. As we slowly come back to some semblance of reality of what we had before, I personally can't wait to dap each of you up in person <laughs> um, and pick up like we never skipped a beat. So until then, see you guys on the sticks. Oh, oh Chaz. Chaz. Damn, melting my icy yeah, heart. Chaz. Melting my old man oh, heart. heart yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. The feels. Oh. I mean, he's, I can't, that is. He ain't wrong. Dude, yeah. that saying, I'm gonna remember that for the rest of the day. That's we real. grew up in CF. Last we game. We matured in next level. Yeah, it's true. Last, dude, oh man, he's right, I'm gonna cry. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Damn, man. Damn, son. I met my best friends through playing. I've had great relationships with, with people I dated and spent mm -hmm. time with and traveled the world and seen different countries. Like, it's, it's crazy, man, for what? Enjoy these moments. Yeah, Enjoy these right moments there. while you got right them. For this <laughs> right here, like. Yo, <laughs> let me tell you something. If you beat art, I'm gonna lose my <laughs> fucking <laughs> love it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely hard to, it's not you. Well, dash is not a thing yet? No, no. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> no. There's no dashes, there's no throw breaks. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think like come. about the East Coast, next level. It's like the scene isn't as big as say West Coast, but the quality. You know there. everybody. Yeah, the quality. You know quality, quality, quality is there. certainly there. West Coast is kind of like Hug Squad. They really help each other. Hug Squad. But, but, but that, yeah. Hug Squad and Thug Too nice Squad. Out here. Hug Squad. Yeah. Too nice Hug, out. But yeah, like in in New York, you know, because it's like an arcade mentality, I guess. I mean, 
obviously next level is not an arcade venue, it's a hybrid console, yeah. that's an arcade venue. But like, I feel like that mentality still kind of like stood, like carried yeah. over. Yeah. Where, where it's like, you know, everybody kind of gets beastly on their own and it's like, if you don't win, you don't eat type of mentality, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, that's true. S that's save true, that, yeah. save <laughs> that shit for national. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I do think there's also something important. I know like the Japanese are heavy on this too. Let's say if I'm beating Helst in something, me teaching Helst how to counter it essentially makes me a better player. That it actually brings people up together like yeah. this. And I think that's a huge part of, of, of us. I'm always open to give advice. Like I'm always down to help people, but I don't personally like giving advice, but if somebody asks me, I'm always down to like help and stuff. Like that's kind of the beauty of the uh, new school players. Like they definitely bring fresh ideas to yeah. the scene and then they also have the reaction time. So yeah. they definitely have like a new outlook like on the game that some of the older legacy guys like might not see, they might not be aware of. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I think we're kind of in a golden time because the old legacy players that are still good can play like the new school guys and they can both learn from each yeah, other yeah. and go toe to toe with each other. So in the beginning, I remember Henry would always uh, rig the bracket per se and always put me against like all the killers first, but <laughs> you know, it helped. <laughs> <laughs> what what <laughs> the story, <laughs> story sounds very familiar. Go on, <laughs> go on. <laughs> Henry was basically throwing me in the water and I was like, get, get <laughs> we'll better. Get we'll get yeah, yeah, yeah. Start paddling. After die. Yeah, like that's how you know that the old Chinatown fan mentality is still alive. Something I've noticed, especially with a lot of the younger guys doing the Tekken tournaments, we have those legacy players like Fab, Bloodhog, mm -hmm. and Jam and all them. We also got a crop of really good young new players like Justin Iglesias and Fear of Silence and Be Rich, uh, who they actually met each other because they came to Next Level. Mm -hmm. And just yesterday, they had a, a, a eight hour session offline at his place, Fire just session. grinding Fire. game. <coughs> Fire and, session. You know, for the last two grand finals, it's been Beerich and Fear every single time. Really? That's yeah, I specifically have to yeah. separate them now because <laughs> they're almost always gonna make finals together. I remember when Fear would get like 16th or go one and two, two and two, and now he's cracking top eights and breaking grand finals. I wanted to play Tekken, and over time it's become I want to see my community do better. Originally, it was very selfish. It started with one thing, and it started becoming watching the player development. With Next Level, I feel like I have an investment in the growth of the place beyond just being a player trying to be the best, where it's like, now, oh, okay, now we're actually hosting events, we're actually streaming events, we're training the next generation of players. It's still like, at CF, like, I saw everybody, like, as a peer. But then when you go to next level, and, like, you're trying to, like, build up the stream and stuff, build up the players, you see it as, like, man, like, you know, I'm training the next generation of, of, of players. It's kind of like my Padawans, in a sense, you know? You yeah, get the family sure. you didn't know you were yeah. gonna get. You're yeah, exactly. Kidding. You're not Extended kidding. family, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's just great to see that the next generation is here. You know, like, people like Adam, like, the, 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 the next champions are, are coming, you know? And it's not dying. That's the only thing I hope for, that the, the, the people still keep coming and the games are still being made and people are still interested in them and Henry keeps giving us a place to play. I'll keep on doing this business as long as possible. I try my best and I hope people come out in the future. I'm a competitive player. I don't like to lose, you know, that that's in my heart. E even today, as I compete in fighting games, I don't want to lose. Got every game counts. Literally yeah. every single time on it, it all happens. Oh! Oh! oh.